Hey everybody, so I'm Chris Kent, and uh, let's go look at some list formatting stuff. All right, let's go over here. So we've got our classic Warrior Horses site, of course. Uh, you guys may not know it, uh, but uh, Warrior Horses are global. And global doesn't just mean the land. It means the land and the sea, and the Warrior Horse is the master of all domains. So, as a result, they use SharePoint, of course, to track the uh, aquatic assets that they have deployed around the world. All right, so if we check our aquatic assets library here, or list, all right, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to just take a look at a couple of things that make this a little easier to read, or a couple of things that we could do. Now, the first is something we've looked at before. Let me zoom that in a little bit so we can see it. There, we go. Oh, there we go. That's pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to take a look at right is alternating rows. So this is something in the past we've done uh, through a format, and we've kind of taken care of it ourselves. But if we go to Format Current View, we've got kind of our first of our view formatting little wizards here, alternating row styles. And we can just check that, right? And wow, we got nice stuff going on there. You can actually edit these. Right? If you haven't seen this, you can pick some exciting colors, right? So this is aquatic, so we'll kind of do this green and blue, right? And if we save that, that's cool. Uh, one of the things to note, though, if you go to advanced mode, you can see the JSON that gets generated, All right? You'll notice in this case, it's got that abstract syntax tree stuff, right? So it's a little harder to read uh, what's going on there. But one of the things you can see is they're using this at row index. So that's what I want to talk about today is this at row index and how all that works. So obviously one of the number one uses is for this alternating row stuff, uh, but it's got a ton of other uses. So let's take a look at those. So when we're thinking about formatting, generally when you're looking at formatting, you are limited uh, to exactly what's in your row, right? So you can get other fields that are part of the view and you can reference those and you can get you know, the current value of the field. And there's a couple other context type variables like the, the URL of the site, right, or the current date and time. But really, row index is the only one that tells us something about the formatting itself, the rendering. So we can't generally reach into other rows, right? So there's no grouping or aggregate type functions uh, that we can do because we can't reach past the rows. But row index allows us to know where we are in the drawing. So let's take a look at just how it works, and then we'll make a little more sense with it. So this is the alternating rows. If you don't like that, we also have in our, our view samples, in our formatting repo, uh, we've got an alternating row class, uh, where if you want to take a look at that JSON, it's basically a one-liner, except for that schema. We'll copy that directly out of GitHub. I'm going to paste that in because it's a little easier to understand than the one they've generated. The other thing is they're using these kind of special backgrounds uh, to their classes, which are fine, create that blue and green. But if you take a look at, like, say, you're changing the, the theme here, uh, you'll notice that it's it's very tied to those colors itself. So even though the site became red, it's not really red, right? And that's all right. They look fine and dark, but what if we want a little more control over that, right? So we could paste in this format, right? If we preview that, you'll see that it has, it's using the theme colors. So when we change the look now, uh, you'll actually see that it, you know, it corresponds to those themes, right? So that's already an improvement. But the way that's kind of working here, of course, we want to keep our horse brown. All right, it's doing this modulus operator on the row index, all right? And that's pretty cool. I mean, you can do all sorts of cool stuff with that. But let's take a look at just the row index by itself. So if I come in here and well, let's actually remove that because I don't like that blue green after all. So we're going to uncheck that and save and we're good. So if we come in here, we're just going to go to this column here. We're going to column settings. We're going to format this column just to demonstrate advanced mode. All right, and we'll just say this is going to be an Elm type, and we'll just make it a div, right? And then we're going to say our uh, text content. Ooh, content. And we're going to say that's just the at row index, right? We just want to see what that value is. So let's make sure we add a comma. All right, we'll preview that. There we go. So now what you start to see, and let's save it just so we can move things around, is that row index starts at zero and then goes up from there. But what's unique about row index is it does not care anything about the values inside of the list item, right? So if I were to sort this, right? So I want to sort all these things. Let's go A to Z on our aquatic assets, right? You'll see the IDs over here change, but the row index itself does not. So that means the first row that's ever rendered is always going to be zero. And even as we go, right, we've got tons of items in this and things kind of lazy load in with our infinite scrolling, right? We'll start to see it. 
There you go. There is it loading. There you go. Starts to load in right here. We start to see the format continues to apply. And so it's still instead of row index, it's almost easier to think of this as render order. All right. So what do we use this for other than alternating values? So here's the scenario. All right. So I've got this very exciting list. Let's remove that format so that we can not worry about the row index here. I'm going to delete that. Now, what if I want to do some cool stuff? Like, right, I want to I want to kind of change this up. I don't really want to show active, right? I want to like change deployed to show whether it's active or not. So let's say I've got a, a view format, which I happen to have. All right, I'm going to come here and I'm going to format the current view. I'm going to go to advanced mode so I can paste one in, the one that I've got kind of prepared. And when I save this, you'll see, wow. So I've decided now I'm going to show my own columns, right? So I'm just showing title and I'm showing the uh, deployed. And the deployed, I'm making it red if active is no longer true, right? So it's no longer an active asset, so I want to show it in red. And that's cool, right? That works just fine. The problem is now I have these extra column headers up here. They don't really correspond. I can do stuff with them. They don't lined up the way I want them. It's a little weird, right? So kind of the obvious solution, uh, not really obvious, but it might be obvious if you're familiar with this stuff, Right, is to come in here and we're going to add this uh, hide column header. Right, so it's a thing you could do on view formats. So I'm going to say hide column header. I'm going to set that to true. All right, when I do that, hey, now I don't have to worry about all that not lining up. But now I've lost my header entirely. Right, what does this date mean? It's just kind of floating out here. So I could try and put something in line, but it would just look bad, right, with the word deployed everywhere. So what now we're going to do is something. Uh, it's a technique we've used. It's called faking the header here. I just made the name up. That sounds good. <laughs> right, so I'm going to copy one that's got that in here, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that header myself. Now, how did I do that, right? Everything gets evaluated row at a time, but what I've done here, if we come up here, so you can take a look at this. This is a sample that's available, but the key part here is for my column header, right? So I'm just drawing that like normal my display, I'm saying if the row index is zero, so it's the very first row, then then I want to make it flex, otherwise don't show it. All right, so by doing that, I've now got my own custom header. I can actually access fields that are part of the view, like active, but I don't have to have a header for them. All right, so I can completely hide that. That way I've got just what I want to show, which is pretty cool. Uh, but you know, we lose some of the functionality, we lose the menus, right? I can't sort by these. And if I scroll down, I no longer have a sticky header, right? So I might do something like, um, you know, mod, and we'll say 30, right, equals zero instead. So now if we preview that, we'll actually see that the column header shows up every 30 rows, right? So we've got a lot of flexibility on how we want to do that, which is really cool. And all of that's made possible through row index. So no matter what my sort or my filter is, I'll have all that kind of applied. So that's pretty exciting, right? But for now, I'm going to pull all that off because we can go just slightly further for no reason at all. Um, and that's, uh, I did save that in there. Okay, good. So what if I want to just do something uh, off the wall and, and pointless? Well, good news, you can. So I've got this other sample here. It's called the generic row index drawing. And I'm just going to show you what we can do. So if we take a column like active, so that sounds exciting. We're going to column settings. We're going to format this column. Again, I'm going to advanced mode where I can just paste my JSON myself. I paste it in here, and you guys can look through this. Again, it's a sample that's available. But if we preview this, or we'll actually save it, we'll scroll over here. Now we're actually going to have a little drawing. We'll come back. All right, so we shot the sun. We got a nice little boat. And then here's the water. And as we scroll down, right, we got some little fish that show up. and. The water gets a little deeper as we go, all right? And we just keep going all the way to the bottom of this ocean. Let's see where we're going to go here. You notice the IDs are still got our other sort, and that's fine. Scroll, scroll, scroll somewhere down here in the depths of the ocean. What might we see? Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, we have a horse in a submarine. So we've got ourselves our, our scuba horse out here taking a look at the submarine. And the whole idea is we arbitrarily drew, drew this. And if we take a look at the format here, format this column. Where's my format? <laughs> we'll just paste it in again so we can take a look at it. But if we come up here, all we're doing is something that's very similar to the other techniques. 
we're only drawing certain things uh, based on when that row index. So here's the sun. It's one of those UI fabric icons, right? And we're just saying, just draw in the first row. Then we've got our boat, right? Just draw it in the in the fourth row here, all right? And then we've got a little more stuff here. The fish, let's draw those every 24 rows, right? But not the first row. And then we've got down here, we've got our submarine, right? We want to just draw draw in row number 200, right? Because there's a zero base index. And we're going to draw a horse underneath and one more below that. And then we handle the depth of the ocean right here in this formula for the background color. So you can actually set the RGBA value, right? So that's what we're doing here based on that row index. And that gives us that nice uh, light blue to dark blue kind of as we travel through the sea. And that's very exciting, completely pointless, but hey, now you can do it too. Uh, so that's pretty good. So let's take a look at that. Let's kind of summarize here on the row index. So the row index, careful to, to keep it in mind that it has nothing to do with the value of the items like all other tokens do, right? So again, think of it as like render order, and it's going to be the rendered index of a row within a view, and that's going to be true even as new rows come in, right? So as you're doing that infinite scroll, it's going to keep track, and you'll be able to do things with that. So it starts at zero. This is not available in SharePoint 2019, but it is SharePoint Online only. A couple of things you do that. So one of the key things people do besides the alternating rows is this custom header. All right, so turn off those existing headers, check to see if it's zero and show it. And uh, there you go, pretty exciting. And so finally, make sure you check out the full documentation on this. There's a bunch of information about the row index and what you can do with it. There's also the alternating row class, and I didn't list them here, uh, but we also have our custom header format and our generic row index drawing samples that are available to you uh, within that sample repo. All right, that's all I got. Excellent, Chris. Excellent, Chris. Super, useful. super useful, super, super, super useful. useful. This is critical stuff, absolutely. No, just great demo on, on, on how the row index actually works. Thank you, Chris, for that one. Uh, a lot of chats on the chat window.